Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series, You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about metric extensions in Oracle Enterprise Manager and we'll create a use case for a metric extension to alert us on backup status. First, let's understand what is a metric extension. A metric extension is an extension to OEM's capacity to collect certain metric on its targets that is beyond its default collection type and schedule. To access the default metric collected for a target database by OEM, you can navigate to the target's homepage. So the metric collected for this target database can be seen by going to this Oracle database, monitoring, metric and collection settings. If you see a lot of metrics have been collected by OEM by default, like the errors logged in the alert.log, archive area uses, data failure, dump area uses, failed login attempts, recovery area uses, table space uses, etc, etc. But you will not find the metric collected for backup status in this default list of collected metrics. In other words, there is no metric for backup status. OEM will not automatically alert you on backup failures for any of its target databases. To achieve this, we will extend OEM's capacity to collect metric data periodically on backup status. And based on the conditions applied on the backup status, the metric extension will do the work for us by sending critical warning or clear alerts. You can navigate to the metric extension space by going to this enterprise monitoring metric extension. Right now, we don't have any metric extensions created. Secondly, your backups may be running from different platforms. You may be running your backups from Dell EMC Networker or Net Backups or Oracle Secure Backups or OEM or even your own scripts schedule in CronTab. But whatever may be your backup platform or mechanism, you can always use OEM to alert you on backup failures. So let's start. We'll create a metric extension and we'll deploy on this target database CatDB so that any failures on the backups can be alerted from OEM. To create the metric extension, we'll go to Enterprise, Monitoring, Metric Extension, and there are different types of metric extension we can create like OS script based metric extension, SQL script based metric extensions, SQL based metric extensions, etc. We'll go to actions, create metric extension, and we will create a SQL based metric extension here. And the target type will be database instance. Name of the metric extension will be say archive log backup status so the reason behind my selection of the archive log backup status is this backup runs more frequently than the full or incremental backup but the same logic can be applied while creating a metric extension for monitoring the full backup also ideally the full or incremental backups run once every day or it runs less frequently than the archive log backups in our case, the archive log backup runs every two hours. And once we put a name for the metric extension there, it will ask for a display name. We'll put the same name there. And the adapter here will be a SQL. And the description we can put like ME to monitor archive log backup. Data collection will be enabled. Data upload will be yes. And use metric data this use the second option alerting and historical trending upload interval one collections and collection frequency this is important here because our archive log backup runs every two hours so we will have to check if an archive log backup in the last two hours failed or it was succeeded for the appropriate alert so our run frequency or the collection frequency will be also every two hours then we'll go to the next phase here we have to define the query that will actually collect the status of the backup. 
So we'll connect to the target database using SQL prompt to write our query. I'll connect to the target database in SQL prompt using sys. And I'll run a query to list out all our archive log backups first. So I'm giving this SQL query that I'm using here in the description of this video below. You can copy it from there. So it's basically listing out all the archive log backups that ran in the last 24 hours. There's a condition like sysdate minus one. And we can see that our archive log backups, ideally it runs every two hours, like it ran on 17th of September at 22 hours, that is 10 p.m. Then in the midnight, then in the 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6, 8, 10, this 11, I ran an ad hoc backup, also 11.45, then again 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, etc. These are all like scheduled backups that runs every two hours. Now we'll change this query to list out the backups that ran only in the last two hours to find its status. We'll simply modify this with select status start time of the backup from Armen backup job details where input type equal to archive log and start time greater than equal to sysdate minus 2 divided by 24. That means it will go back by 2 hours from the current time when this SQL statement is running and order by session key. It is not that important, but I'll explain why I'm keeping it for now. Now, it is listing only the last backup that ran within the last two hours and, and it is showing us the status that is completed and that ran at 8 p.m. in the evening. So this is the one. Now, purposefully, I will make one archive log backup to fail and we'll see if it is selecting the latest status. To do that, first, I will switch the log file a couple of times so that a few archive logs are generated. So alter system switch log file. One, two, three. And I switch the log file for three times and the archive log sequence is advanced by three. Now I'll see the location where the archive logs are generated. So parameter recovery and all our archive logs are going to this location. So I will go there and see the archive logs present in that location. So three archive logs are generated and we will rename one of the archive logs so that the backup job will fail to identify this archive log and eventually the backup job itself will fail. So we will just rename this file to something like say something dot arc. So we have now one archive log missing in the sequence. Now we'll connect to our Armen. All the environment variables are already set. So the Armen will connect to our candidate database that is catdb. So we'll back up all our archive logs. Those are not backed up by this command backup device type disk say tag percentage tag archive log all not backed up delete all input and this backup is going to fail as expected it is not able to identify the missing archive log there and because of this missing sequence the job has failed now we will go back to our sql prompt and we'll run the query that we created to check the status so we see that it is listing out the failed backup that ran just a few minutes back but it is also enlisting the completed backup before that because 
within the last two hours, these two backup jobs are also falling as per their start time. So we'll have to make sure that it selects only the status of the latest job that ran. So we have to make a small change into the query. And the most simplistic way to make this change is to take the max of the start time. So we'll put like where input type equal to archive log and start time equal to we'll put another subquery here select max start time from v dollar rml backup sub details where input type equal to archive log again and start time greater than equal to our old condition that is sys date minus 2 divided by 24 so our query is almost complete that is select status and the start time from arm and backup job details where input type equal to archive log and start time equal to select max of start time from this view again where input type equal to archive log and start time is greater than equal to sys that minus 2 divided by 24 let's run it and this time it is giving us the latest status now we have to make one last modification to this query because in the metric extension we don't need this start time all we need is the status so we'll modify this query to list the status yeah this is perfect so we are getting the desired status here but consider a situation when your backup did not even run in that case the v dollar armand backup job details will not have any entries for the sql to check the backup status in other words the metric extension that is using this sql will not send any alert and you will be in a false impression that there is no backup issues but that is even more dangerous fortunately you can tweak this sql statement to handle that situation and return something when the backup job did not run as per its schedule to do that let's take this sql to a notepad and modify it so this is our base query that i just copied into notepad and i will modify it to handle the situation when the backup did not even run so the status column of the arm and backup job details has usually values like completed completed with warnings completed with errors or failed so we have to handle those situations accordingly so that we get the exact status that we are looking for and we'll use the case structure here it will be something like case when status equal to completed then it is success when status like we will use wildcard here so percent is warning then it's a warning situation in all other cases it's critical and error situation critical backup failed and we'll close it with a end keyword and a bracket and then the same condition and here we have to add one more subquery using the union clause and that will be select critical backup not run as the alias status from dual as you might aware of this nice table called dual when you want your sql statement to return something without querying an actual table you can use this dual table so we'll put a condition like where not exist select one from we'll copy this line from v dollar arm and backup job details where input type equal to archive log and start time greater than equal to sys that minus 2 divided by 24 so what it is doing it will return this text string critical backup not run 
as status from this dual table where not exist. See this not exist clause. It will be true when this SQL statement will not return anything. And when it will not return anything, it is the situation where your backup did not run as per the schedule. And we are doing an union with the existing query. So when this situation is true, your previous query will not return anything. The first query before the union and this query will actually return something. So we are able to handle our situation when the backup did not even run. So this query is the one that is actually we are going to use in our metric extension. I have mentioned this query in the description of this video below and if you want you can copy it from there. Now I'll copy it to the metric extension. We'll paste it here. And then click next. In this space we have to create a column. A column is nothing but a variable which is going to accept the value that is returned by the SQL statement that we designed in the previous step. So we will add one new metric column. We'll put a name like arc backup status. Display name will be also arc backup status. The type will be string and the category will be availability. Transient will be false. Comparison operator contains the warning word there for warnings and the critical word there for critical alerts. Manually clearable alert will be false. It means when the situation will improve like the backup job successfully ran, then the next run of this metric extension will automatically pick up that new status and it will clear the last failure alert. So we don't have to manually do that. Number of occurrences before the alert one and the message for the alert will be the value of the column name that is this arc backup status is the value returned by the query. That is, it will look like the value of arc backup status is either warning or critical or failure or not run etc etc as we sit in our SQL query. And the clear message will be similar, but it will have the clear keyword there. So alert for our backup status is cleared. Plus we'll add some additional information there. The value of column name is value. Obviously it will be replaced with the success word in the actual alert message and we'll save it. Now, click next. Let it take the default credentials to connect to the database. Click next. Now in this space, we can test our metric extension whether it's actually working or not. To do that, we have to add one target and we'll use our candidate target that is the cat DB. Click select and here we'll run a test and we'll see what value it is returning. So it is getting a value success. It means when it was checking for the last two hours of backup, it did not find a failure. Please note that we created a situation by deleting one archive log when the archive log backup actually failed, but that was more than two hours back. So the status now is shown as success because the subsequent backups were successful because I renamed the archive log back to its original name. Now we'll click next and finish. So this is our new metric extension that we created ME dollar archive log backup status. Now this metric extension is not deployed on any of the targets. We just tested it against one of our target databases, but we actually did not deploy it. So we have a couple of options here to deploy a metric extension but before deploying you have to save it as a deployable draft so save it so now it is in a deployable draft and we can publish this metric extension publishing means is to enable this metric extension to be used by other administrators of this OEM system so it's not important 
or compulsory to publish it because without publishing also you can deploy it against your targets so we'll leave it for now we'll not publish it we'll simply deploy it on one of the targets and we'll see if it is working or not so when this metric extension is selected we will click on deploy to targets and here we will select the database instance that we want to deploy this metric extension on select click submit and it is scheduled we'll refresh this page the line is gone it means the metric extension is successfully deployed so we'll go to the metric extensions page again and we will see where it is deployed yeah so it is deployed targets one means earlier it was zero now it is deployed on one target that we selected and that is the cat db when we tested this metric extension it returned a value success now we'll again create a situation and we'll see if this metric extension is going to create a critical alert for us and we see the archive logs generated today and like the last time we did we will simply rename this one to something dot arc so now one of our archive log is missing now we'll use rmen to connect to the database and run a backup job so rmen target slash we'll run our backup job i'm simply copying the last used command press enter as expected, the backup has failed because it was not able to identify one of the archive logs that we renamed. Now we will go out of this RMAN and we'll see if our metric extension is going to create an alert for us. Now this metric extension is designed to run every two hours, but for testing purpose, we will modify the schedule so that we don't have to wait for two hours to see if it is successfully sending us alerts. To do that, we'll go to our candidate database first. We'll go to Oracle Database, Monitoring, Metric Collection, and Settings. So we'll be able to see one entry for the metric extension that we created. And it is here. If you see that archive log backup status, this is our metric extension, which was initially not there. And because we deployed it on this target, now it is visible here under the metric collections and settings. So this is designed to run every two hours and we'll modify this frequency to say two minutes so that we will immediately get one alert on the failure click continue it will complain about the repeat interval being very low but that is okay for testing purpose we'll click continue and click ok once the metric extension and the settings are saved we will go to the incident manager page for this target database and we'll see if any incident is created for the backup failure so we have received one incident for the backup failure and let's see what actions have been performed for this incident after selecting this incident we click an, on events Click on the latest events and we can see what actions have been performed here for example a mail has been sent to this email ID that is my Gmail ID by this rule name my rule set and under my rule set there's a rule called my rule one now We can go to the incident rules and check on this particular rule that I have defined and under this rule for the severity in clear critical and warning it is sending one email to this email ID so if you want a pager duty to be sent to the DBA on call or whoever responsible for handling this backup failure you can instead of an email ID you can put the pager duty distribution list here or you can create also one incident ticket using any third-party software like BMC remedy or ServiceNow, using a routine or a script there so you have different options to do that 
within an incident rule set. So it's all together a different chapter, which I will cover in a different video how to design a rule set for generating different alerts and based on the severity, what different actions can be performed. Now, if I go to my Gmail, I can see that a couple of emails have been received for the backup failure. For example, this one, if I see the EM event critical for this particular target, the value of the arc backup status is critical backup failed. Now we will fix the underlying backup issue and we'll see if a corresponding clear alert has been also generated by this metric extension and we receive one clear alert email. All we need to do is to rename the archive log back to its original name. and run the backup job using the same command that we used before. And as expected, this time, the backup is successfully completed. Now we'll go to our OEM page again, and we will see if a corresponding clear alert has been received. We can either wait for its regular schedule to run every two minutes to see if a clear alert has been received or we have also one option here this re-evaluate alert can be used to run that metric extension again to see if the situation has improved or the issue has been fixed so instead of waiting we'll simply click the re-evaluate alert and we can see that the status has changed to clear and the incident has been cleared from here and it has been replaced by another one with this message alert for arc backup status is cleared the value of arc backup status is success again we can go to the events and click on the latest events and see what it has done it has sent one email with the clear status to my email id again so let's go and check there if we have received one yes so this is the one we have received just now if we click there we can see the issue has been fixed and the incident has been cleared so this is how you can design a metric extension to alert on the backup status and send us critical or warning alerts on our email id or in our pager duty or it can create tickets in a third party software or many more things once our testing is over we will change back the collection frequency of the metric extension to two hours again so we'll go to metric collection and settings for the database target this is our metric extension and from two minutes we'll change the collection schedule to two hours continue and click ok and the change has been done so viewers i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the oracle dbs or similar educational videos that i am uploading every week